All right, hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Joe and welcome back to the homestead. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at pasture management. You saw the thumbnail, 20,000 pounds on a quarter acre. We're gonna be jumping in with Mark who has been doing this for years and really has this system dialed in. So let's jump in, talk to him and get that info. This is the Anyone Can Farm Experience. Okay, let's talk about rye a little bit. Rye is one of my favorite forages to plant because it does so well on poor soils, but it does really good, really good on good soils. But you can take poor soils and turn them into good soils with the use of rye. Now the mangalitsa pig will eat rye right out of the field. Uh, so let's just talk a little bit about how much is out here and how we produced it. So last fall, <clears throat> I spread rye out here with a broadcast seeder, and it's just a, a little um, whirly gig type broadcast seeder that I've had for about 15 years. I spread maybe two pounds of rye seed out here. So figure two coffee cans full of rye. We just took a square foot and pulled it out, knocked the dirt out of it, and took it in the shop and weighed it. And we got 2.3 pounds, so let's just say two pounds. I'm standing on a quarter acre here. This, this pen is a half acre, and we've got it divided with a poly wire at a quarter acre. So a quarter acre is about 10,800 square feet, something around that. And we're talking about two pounds per square foot. So we're, we're in the neighborhood of 22,000 pounds of rye. And this right now is immature, all right? This is as far as it's gotten. It has not seeded out. And what we might want to do is we might want to turn the pigs in on this now before it seeds out, because once they take it down, the rye plants will think, oh, we've got to reproduce again to make our seed head. And so they will try, they will try to do that. And they may make it before fall. So uh, we're, we're at the point now where the sows that are in here are getting ready to farrow in a month. I would like them to get in here and get some of this coursing through their system, this good chlorophyll and the protein that's in this. And uh, so we're gonna open this up and we'll, you'll be able to see that happen. Well, you may be wondering, will they eat this? So let's do a little demonstration of what they think about rye. All right, so standard farm pigs, if you expose them to this kind of forage, they don't do so well on it, they'd be kind of uninterested in it and they'd just be waiting around for their hog chow. Uh, but the Mangalitsa sees uh, forages like this and they will eat the stalks, the leaves, the roots, everything. And if you wanna know more about that, uh, we've got a video right up here. As you can see, they're gonna eat every bit of the plant, roots and everything. They're gonna take the whole thing off and they have the ability to turn that carbohydrate source into fats and proteins. Okay, well, uh, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye, and I'll, I'll try to explain it the best I can. If you look out over this field, you've got a winter's worth of manure laying on top of the ground. And uh, what our goal is going to be now is to get that turned under so that the organisms that are in the soil can use that, right? And then we're gonna plant on top of that over here. And this, this rye will take a lot of that nutrient out of the soil and make it available to the animals. So that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish here. If I was to just leave this like this covered in manure, it would just stay here. And we, you know, the organisms that's in the manure would just, just dry up and you know, fade away. Uh, another kick that we get out of this, and this is probably a little more important, is uh, the nutrient that's down on here 
in this field right now, if these sows had their babies out here, this nutrient in the form of manure and, you know, unpleasantness, the baby pigs could not utilize. But if we plant rye on top of it, that rye is going to become part of the mother's diet for the next month or so before they farrow, before they have their babies. And all of the nutrient that's in that rye now, you can see they're just starting to get into it, is going to be in their milk. And the babies will reap the benefits of the nutrient that's on this field. So right now it's manure sitting on top, but as soon as the sows cross the line and go over there, we'll put the line back up and they'll stay in there. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We'll rototill this in and then we'll plant this with something that will pull the nutrient to the top. All right, so let's talk about when you're gonna turn your pigs in on the rye that you've planted. Um, right now, where we're at, this is about a two pound per square foot crop. We pulled out a, a square foot, took it and weighed it, about two and 2.3 pounds is what we got. Um, if we waited until it was starting to head out, uh, a lot of the nutrient that's in the leaf, a lot of the moisture that's in the leaf and the stalks is going to be utilized to go up into the head. And so we're going to lose a lot of the palatability of you know, the stock. The stock right now, it's juicy and sweet. It's very sweet. So the pigs will eat this right now. If we go to the full head, they're gonna go just after the heads, and then a lot of the leaves are gonna to start to turn brown and they won't be very interested in them. So, in my opinion, or what I've, what I've the data that I've gathered, gathered so far, if we turn them in at about a two pound crop, we're gonna get the most bang for the buck. So right about now is perfect. And it just happens to coincide with when they're getting ready to farrow. So, okay, today we're gonna to be planting peas, but the routine is very similar to the routine that we go through for planting rye, except the time of year. Uh, today is May 18th. Uh, Fair, for where we are, it's fairly early in the spring, uh, so we're having cold nights. If you put your hand down in the soil, it's actually cool. But field peas will germinate in cool soils. They actually do better in cool soils than they do in, in warm soils. Uh, with rye, we're generally we're planting that at the end of the season, and we'll let it just come up a little bit before the snow comes, and then the snow will cover it. And that's a really good setup there because it will not winter kill and the snow will, will protect it actually. And then when the snow melts, it melts right down through it. So it puts a lot of nitrogen in the soil. The rye can take off. And when the plants get big, then they can utilize all the manure that's in the soil. So this is not just feeding pigs. This is feeding the soil as well. All right, so let's talk about planting the fields and that would be preceded by the field preparation. Now, if we've run pigs on the field, especially rye, they're gonna take off everything. Everything will be gone. Um, if you wanna get it planted before that, then you can just push them off onto another field and then get in there and prepare the field. So the way I prepare the field now is I've got a rototiller that's a three point that goes on the back of my 50 horsepower tractor and I'm able to prepare the field to make it look the way this does now. And to plant it, try to keep it low tech. I like to plant crops that uh, I can broadcast seed. Broadcast seed means you could just go out there and you could throw it out there, all right? So I'll go one better than just throwing it out and I'll go to this. They call this a whirly gig and you can fill this bag with seed and then there's a little lever on the side here that you can set uh, how far, how much seed you want to drop.
Bam, and there we go, guys. So if you couldn't tell right there at the end, he uses a, just, it's a cattle panel with something laying on the back. It's an old uh, blade from like a road commission, but you just need something heavy like cinder blocks or something. And we run over the pasture with that on the back of the tractor. And what that does is just covers up all those seeds that have just been broadcasted. So that wasn't clear. That's what's going on behind the tractor there. Now, thank you guys again for watching this video. Um, go ahead, hit it that, give us that old thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And uh, if you guys are interested in using the broadcast spreader that Mark's using in this one, Go ahead, check out the link in the description, you'll see it there. Thank you again for watching, we'll catch you all in the next one.